Hello, everybody. Um, wow. Uh, we just went through a conversation about the soil of our entire planet. And uh, I just woke up and I'm just like super happy about this discussion because um, it's going to be about Earth's wild soil. Um, and essentially, we're going to try to get into a little bit more of a uh, awesome discussion um, really about where the soil um, really is complicated and important to not just humans, but animals. Um, and we're looking at an eye here, um, the Lake Victoria in East Africa. So um, this uh, really is one of the most important areas in the entire world um, and really in our entire solar system. Um, and in the foreseeable future this is this is the area uh that really has a lot of complexity both with a lot of people you can see at the top of this eye is kampala uganda um and then um just all around the lake here uh being um some interesting stuff happening uh with some population and uh wildlife so i'm gonna try to diagram this very carefully um, it might be a very, this might be an all day uh, conversation um, just because there's so much information uh, that we need to look at carefully. So the project that we're about to do is pretty complicated because um, basically we're going to primarily focus on the soil, um, but it's also climate um, and river systems. So we're going to basically look at um, try to look at everything here uh, for these most important areas and specifically helping with what we can do to preserve certain areas. Um, I'm already f pretty familiar with some of these areas. Um, I wanted to say that this back door of the jungle, um, so the, if you're not familiar with the jungle here in Africa, um, you might be surprised that there's a kind of a piece of this jungle separate um, and even a third, you know, these there's this, these sections here of the jungle that a lot of people don't really know about because of the climate is uh, complicated. It's not just a straight line like it looks like here. Um, there's actually um, some complexity there. So, um, and particularly on the back door here. So. Um, the one thing that I really wanted to emphasize in this discussion is the population, particularly in East Africa around the Great Lakes, uh, human population. And then there's uh, different types of gorillas. There's the chimpanzee, um, and you'll look at some of those maps. Um, and there's bigger animals, uh, elephants and some others, um, giraffes and, and some things. And we want to look at all of those uh, carefully. Uh, so there's just so much that I want to talk about. Uh, you can see quite a number of earthquakes in this region, um, even some earthquakes deep in the Congo. Um, you can kind of see uh, the Congo River spinning around here with um, this major city of a million or more people. I think it's maybe 700,000, but um, sorry, it, it's, it's a lot of people. So there's also um, Kinshasa down here, um, kind of at the... Um, near uh, where the, the Congo starts to head into the ocean again. Um, but uh, this back door here, as I call it, um, really is centered around Kampala. And um, it's unlikely that the population is going to change too much too soon recently because there's just so many people uh, in Kampala as well as Rwanda um, and just this whole area. So let's look at that carefully um and try to uh see what's happening so uh as i try to take a sip of water here and just take a moment um to think about this you know water i drink water all the time throughout the day um so one of the difficult problems here is it's not just the soil it's the water right so i've carefully diagrammed all this water system out but uh, we want to go back and even diagram that even more carefully um to really look at the critical regions um, that uh, really matter a lot here uh, to the wildlife. And I'm gonna try to do that almost blindfolded. I've already done one study um, and I can show you the images of those river systems, uh, but you can see uh, there's something that you might not expect uh, 
um, for this whole entire water system here. Um, and essentially what that is, is that it's the Nile River, right? Um, it's almost upside down. It's one of the only rivers um, really that does this in the world. I'm going to have to uh, turn off the river systems here just because it's so much information so you can see. So and I'll zoom out and you can see what I'm talking about. So essentially uh, there's a weird, what a lot of people don't know about is there's a pathway here uh, there's a couple of weird pathways, right? So first of all, this lake belongs to the Congo, right? Um, but mostly the Lake Victoria actually is part of uh, Egypt, right? It goes down through here and heads into Cairo. So this, so actually the mud will drain down and go to Cairo. So it's actually. Um, and even deep in the jungle, right? So you'll see here on Rwanda's side, it's not quite true because the mountain range splits and there's actually huge population here. So these these two actually go to the Nile River and this also goes to the Nile River. And it's pretty cool. I've seen people take small little canoes and just one of my friends goes into these lakes and went on a little bit of a road, like a, uh, visit and so this is population here so you can see there's just a huge amount of population all around here primarily on the north side and west side and this is the capital of rwanda but you can see that this city right here basically this is the wildlife access is on the south side it really should be primarily on the west side um and really kampala has a big say in what happens here because uh you know the wildlife basically comes right in from the jungle likes to drink water here um, but actually these back areas become vital and you can see they're actually going quite far into the jungle you see the trails here and this is actually going quite deep and even a major city right in the back part deepest part of the jungle so several major cities um so and you see this river actually here so having clean water here is very important uh, but we're going to try to look at the soil um, and take a look at that carefully here. So, so on this map, I loaded up the rivers and now you can start to see, um, some of the importance there. So this map probably, it immediately scared me. It should probably immediately scare, uh, you, but basically the entire, East Africa is farmed. Um, so I'm gonna get a, grab an image of that, but basically you can see heavy farming, particularly now Kampala is here, right? But this is actually in between Kenya and Uganda and the blue area is heavy farming. So there is some heavy farming as well as population. So the purplish color is actually the urban center. Um, and so essentially the, the wildlife has no access because it's all farmed around the lake. Um, however, a couple key pockets here um, can provide us some knowledge. So uh, let's diagram that out to see. So what's immediately helpful is we essentially see that um, it's hard to use the soil map here, right? Um, I'm gonna use green, um, a dark green, um, but Basically, this area right here looks like the only unfarmed area, and then you can see there's a pocket right in here, right? Um, and basically, that's it, right? There's a small little sliver of land, and that's basically a national park, uh, Serengeti. <coughs> but man, everything else is really tightly farmed there. So, and on the soil map, it's actually a different map that we need, right? So you can see um, that uh, most likely uh, this area right in here is vital uh, actually for uh, wildlife. Um, and then you can see there's a probably a pocket right in here, right? Um, and then actually with these, this is high mountains uh, in here. So there's actually a section where quite far into Kenya, um, we could really say is very important and actually, um, you know, it, it's a very complicated uh, story there. So, so actually the, the two maps look quite different. Um, I'm going to save this here and then post it. Uh, 
So, uh, actually, this heavy region here, um, where it's farmed heavily, is probably extremely vital, right? So we know that uh, it's actually drier because of the climate um, map. Uh, you know, we can basically uh, say, I'm going to put this in blue uh, so that we can see the importance of the water situation. So on this side, really, we have um, kind of a piece of the puzzle um, that we probably should go like this and even maybe go back through here, right? So actually, all of this, um, it really, and even this is probably not correct, right? I mean, clearly... Um, this whole section uh, is going to be extremely vital as well. So there's kind of two pieces, right? And then a third um, with basically everything else of the jungle, right? So uh, so basically what happens here is that there's that population pressure right in here, um, making uh, essentially this area, and I'll put this like this so you can kind of see um, being extremely important, right? And then particularly... Um, right in here and it's hard to explain but I'll basically do it like this so you can see um, some areas like that so basically uh, the climate is very important right and it's just hard to appreciate how important Kampala is so it's almost like it should be a urban zoo uh, it's basically the largest city um, in East Africa um, and uh, pretty much one of the largest cities in all of Africa. Um, so uh, it has a huge play on what happens here. So here I loaded up the uh, rivers map. Um, and so we started to have a piece of the puzzle um, and we can start to see, you know, basically this is heading, all of this heads out into the Nile. Um, and there's just going to be some uh, regions, and I have to do it in red here. Um, let's put it in purple color here so we can kind of see. I'm going to make it even larger because it's really important. Um, so this branch, uh, and particularly we see a, a, a lake, a couple lakes right in here that are really hard to spot um, on the map. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is circle this whole branch, right? And that really is off of Kongala. Uh, you can see right in here, right? And there's actually, it's just, everything is important. So I, I, I can't even get into how important this stuff is here. So, um, and now we basically get into extreme uh, pressure on the jungle here, right? So, uh, we know that uh, this, it, it, it's really impossible to say how important this is. So, um, you know, I, I'm just not in any good mood to uh, be circling anything here because everything is important. So what I'm going to do is basically just circle all of this whole front. This is all the back door of the jungle, right? Um, and really this all, um, you know, it's it's really it's really everything up 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 here as well. So, uh, and and remember, there is that whole piece here that basically connected Kampala. Now, this uh, this this is a really interesting point because of the uh, the pathway here, right? So, there's actually particularly around this guy, uh, you have like an, almost an urban an urban piece right in here right and that you know you can kind of see here let me circle these so you can you can actually see what what it is uh but uh you know so basically these areas and then particularly um these the, the, these lakes here so well, let me get a regular map so you can see what we're actually talking about here in a second uh, so right here we're looking at Rwanda um, and basically what happens here it one of the things I, I don't want to talk about it with Google Earth because I actually appreciate this map a little bit better um, and let me just make sure I got all the latest uh, earthquakes here so 
basically what we're going to zoom in here is look at and uh sorry about this so i want you to look carefully at this map um there's some things that you might not obviously see you can see major deforestation around here and then very significant deforestation there's a lot of it that you cannot see there's a forest map but what i really want to emphasize on the soil side of things the thing that and this is almost it's hard to even talk about this but this back door the jungle here the reason this is so important is you have mountain range here so you basically have different types of soil and different types of climate um and really that goes into kampala but there's some things that, you, that really you're going to be very fortunate to see in just a moment here in the jungle that maybe very few people have ever seen um about the jungle so uh and basically you can see the population definitely taking into the jungle here um, with even complete uh, deforestation right around there. So we basically have this eye of the jungle right here, but then there's that missing eye uh, that we don't, you can see the heavy deforestation even along the roadways here as well. So the thing that I wanna emphasize here is you're gonna look at some images here that perhaps uh, very few people have ever looked carefully at in terms of deep in the jungle so i'm going to zoom in here and you're going to see some amazing stuff but basically this is the river here and you can see heavy uh, population right here and what that means is that the entire river can be polluted just by these people right here so but the interesting thing is that um with all the heavy population here uh the water does drain off that way so if you looked at the river map uh basically along if you're on this side, you're draining into the Nile, but on your this side, you're draining into the Congo. So actually these heavy population pockets right here actually are vital, making Rwanda, um, and actually Rwanda is should be separate. It actually is not because of this uh, mountain range here. You can see that it's actually mostly part of the uh, Victoria side, but there's actually heavy population. So it makes that Lake Kivu becomes the most important uh, water uh, in the world really because it, uh, it it's actually very swampy and green and uh, it's not people don't swim in this really um, because it's it's so uh, warm this is on the equator um, one of the things you don't realize about the equator it's all, I, I was trying to swim in Florida the water is almost too hot to swim in I was just like wow this is so warm I, I don't know if I can swim in this um, and so uh, the water is very warm and as a result it's fresh water and it also means that uh, you know a lot of biology can grow here now you can start to see uh, some of these rivers here particularly uh, this city which I haven't discussed previously but this uh, city is super important um, because it definitely could uh, pollute the water here um, so let's uh, look at this carefully um, uh, so again, uh, essentially what we're talking about is this whole Lake Kivu region. Um, and really, uh, this whole thing goes right through here. Uh, these, these towns actually go further down here, right? Um, but I'm going to circle this in red uh, because this guy is so important on what we're talking about, right? So basically this guy right here... Um, and particularly these guys right in here. And this is actually called a Goma side. Um, and then you can definitely see uh, here, uh, a lot of people maybe not taking as much responsibility as they need. And I didn't even draw it correctly. I probably need to draw it like this with just huge amounts of importance on all of this. So, and this guy right here uh, being extremely important uh, in terms of what's happening in this guy uh, definitely right so these guys definitely know they're in the jungle there's not any doubt um that i mean it's not uh this is heavy jungle uh right next to i mean this is the deepest part of the jungle so uh if you're living there you definitely need to take responsibility uh for what's happening so let's go back to that climate map and you can see it's actually shifted a little bit north uh on this so the climate and the soil so on this map uh we probably need to take two different images of that and i'm going to try to do that here so you can see so it's actually this pathway which is less populated um that we actually would also need to definitely take a look and this heads out to uh 
the lakes here. So I wanna try to get that image. I'll see if I can zoom out if that helps or not. It probably won't. So uh, this is, I think this is, uh, what's the name of this lake? Uh, Albert, uh, there's another lake here. Uh, so Kivu, uh, so I, there's another thing that I wanna show you really quick as well. So let's, let's diagram this out because it's so important um so the reason again that this is so important is because of the uh uh basically the water right so we we have to have access to the water for the wildlife um even before we talk about the soil you yeah you actually have to have uh yes you have to have food but you definitely have to have water um so uh, let's grab this here and see what we can do uh, for that. Uh, so essentially what we were talking about here, right, um, is, uh, yeah, for sure, uh, this whole region really is going to matter a lot. Um, and it's just, I, I can't even explain it enough. So, uh you know, basically what we're talking about here is that there's this branch, a couple different branches, right? So we see basically this whole guy right in here being vital um, and this whole guy right in here uh, being very vital as well. Um, and then still definitely uh, this guy. There's And there's just population here. So we gotta look at all this really carefully. So uh, yeah, so basically, now it even gets more amazing than this so here's here's the part that i'm afraid to show people is that uh when you look at the uh when you look at this map what what you what you really start to see as you zoom in here is an unbelievable amount of mountain regions right this is deep jungle uh, and uh, man, I don't even know if I can explain this properly, right? So you're basically talking about little rivers running off these mountains and just a lot of little houses for animals, all kinds of them, and basically blocking here, but there's some population here. So it even gets more spectacular. <sighs> Let me just zoom in here and trace one of these rivers. You'll really love this. This is what I did. So this is the Congo River. Let's zoom out so you can see what we're trying to do here, right? So we have this Lake Victoria almost completely populated and farmed around it. So there's really no hope um, for the wildlife. I mean, we need to change all that. Um, but uh, deep in the jungle, we definitely need to make sure. So what we're about to do is see that this is the Congo River. Let's start uh, here at Kinshasa. So this city is ginormous, many millions of people. So what, what are we trying to do here, right? So this is where the Congo empties. And we're going to trace the entire... Wow, that isn't really working right, but it's interesting. So we'll trace the whole entire Congo River. So you can see it kind of goes up through here, um, there's actually a major waterfall. And once it hits this city, it's just a huge city. So you can see many millions of people. There's actually two different countries. So you actually have to have a passport or something to go between these. But um, And you can see here um, that uh, definitely uh, on this side, there's a lot of weird um, areas uh, as well as jungle. And you can see it looks almost deforested on this side um i mean with millions and millions of people where are you gonna get that food from so there is a lot of deforestation here um going on here but there are these little pathway rivers here you don't really see this in the amazon uh it's very flat in the amazon but you have some hills here um which is why uh the congo is maybe more diverse biologically so what we're doing here if you're watching this we're actually tracing uh, all the way up the Congo. It's not what you think. It actually goes like kind of in a spiral, making this other eye. So this eye is actually larger than this eye, this hidden eye. Um, and you can see uh, that it kind of spins around here. And we haven't even gotten to the best part um, yet. So it's kind of scary. These two lakes are very vital. Um, they're not really known about very much, but certainly there's huge populations starting to live there you can see that this whole river here is actually deep into the jungle actually deforestation all the way way and this is not just a few miles 
this is hundreds of miles and even going a thousand plus miles into the into the rainforest so but these two lakes are very critical so it's just i mean this is uh, unbelievably important and you can see that the deepest parts here uh this split off here so this city i've been looking at extremely carefully so can it, this is Kinshasa, but there's another city right here uh, at this joint uh, that basically uh, really needs to work on the water cleanliness. Now this path, you almost should never go up. It's 100% for wildlife, uh, but you can see the main part of the Congo actually goes this way, but this city is actually on this side, uh, the jungle side, um, right? So, and you can see uh, there's probably cleaner water along this branch. Um, but again, there's another city right here that needs to be monitored and you can see the deforestation Going hundreds of miles and even this hundreds and hundreds you can see they've kind of Followed the river and this happens even more of an extent in the Amazon uh, It's really surprising uh, how uh, Deep in the Amazon people have deforested uh, And a lot of it happens right along the river So it's not if you need water and you're an animal you got to go to the river so and they just are taking up this land here. So you can see that the, the Congo is kind of, and it's hard to say how big this Congo is on this map. It looks relatively small, but this is a huge river. And now you're starting to talk about very pristine uh, jungle. Now, a lot of the monkeys, the larger monkeys, uh, uh, some of them live uh, in here. Um, Believe it or not on the north side because it, on the south side, it's very so jungly um, But there's a lot of population pressure. So um, And that happens in uh, Rio de Janeiro. You basically have downtown it happens in India, you know, there's big monkeys uh, right downtown in New Delhi uh, just eating from the garbage as well as humans so uh, and that's not a good situation. They should be eating uh, actual fruits and vegetables that are natural. So, um, so excuse me. <clears throat> so I really probably should have diagrammed this more in detail. I have a separate uh, video specifically on this, um, but here you can see this is even deeper. So we're, the, the thing that's scary here is we're talking about so deep in the jungle here. Um, and by this time, uh, you have another city. The only way to get here um, is it's it's very difficult. So um, you should definitely watch some of the hilarious videos of people. It's sad, but uh, uh, it's just unbelievably difficult to get to some of these regions. Um, and but now what what we're really noticing is that the 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 river takes a big change and it actually heads south, right? And to this city right here and then there's Rwanda as we noticed here um, but if you see there's a pathway here that's been deforested um, that's primarily on the river but what I really want to say is these rivers right here are extremely important because this is like the deep part of the jungle so it's hard to say um, you know the, this is this river is like it, it's the thing is there's a lot more rivers in the Amazon and there's not enough of these kind of rivers in the Congo so it's actually higher priority in the Congo to maintain uh, wildlife regions along these this particular river here and as well as those other ones but you can see uh, that this is starting to head into um, and you definitely should zoom in and look at all the details if you have definitely try to have time you'll be very impressed uh with the jungle here and it's basically heading out into this weird mountain range here so uh and that means that there's going to be more di biodiversity and more types of uh climate and everything right and so basically uh this river here um and you, you can actually trace it really far um here so let me look just zoom in and you can start to see something. So there's actually population along this river here. All right, so you can see a huge town right on the river. So, and this is kind of the scary part, right? So you have these little lakes and you can imagine, I, I can't even imagine living here, but uh, it would be unbelievable uh, town, you know? So they have a lot of uh, roads here as well. I mean, I would be afraid to drive because you'd just run over so many animals. So we're talking about 1,000 
200 animals per square kilometer um so that kilometer different types right uh i mean we have like in my town maybe a bird a chipmunk uh, but 1000 1000 plus different types of animals just within a small area like that so there's a lot and it looks kind of dry on this image uh but the, the light is coming in on the window here so what i'm really trying to say is that this this river right here uh is unbelievably important so where is that one right so let's really try to narrow that down um so it's basically right in on this i think we even looked at that city right there so entirely possible that that was it so there's another city right in here and the problem is humans and wildlife both like to live in the same areas um i mean we're both animals and uh it makes it uh kind of very important to learn how to live together so uh but in general you can see um and this i probably need to circle definitely right here it's just hard to explain this right there's actually another piece of the puzzle there so and this is just i don't know how you explain this but uh so uh basically that's really important right here these these cities are i mean they're right in the jungle and in an area that is extremely important so uh how do we get to talking about that kind of stuff so um let's zoom in a little bit more and we can start to see here and i think you can see um the city again here and it looks like quite a large city um so and this all drains i mean the pollution uh it's just super important to have and and it's important for this to be at an advanced town it's not just dump your water into the congo um they have to have really advanced uh water clean clean water here so because it just goes right into the river and it's gonna flow for a thousand miles uh, or more I, I mean you want to be able to drink right out of the water so I, I had this water here that I was drinking and there was like tiny bacteria in it for some reason and because I garbage picked this bottle and uh, I tried to wash it a couple times but it's still there was small bacteria and I got headaches for days and that's just a little bit of bacteria in the water I mean there's th millions of people that live around this river if they're polluting the river how are the animals gonna further down yeah it's there's not houses along the river but there's people that, there's animals that live there so it's important that even a tiny bit of bacteria and certainly this is very bacteria uh in uh, lake kivu it's if you look at some pictures you'll be very surprised um, it looks blue here but it's definitely not uh like that at all it's very different um so and you can see there's all these really this is a very interesting area and you can see the animals probably go around here there's another river here they probably even go in a little circle and hang out so um and there's just all these other pathways here so a lot of this needs to be diagrammed carefully um because the animals um what i found out about the monkeys they don't even like to cross the rivers a lot of them because they they're afraid to swim um and uh so a ri individual rivers are very important here and uh let's try to diagram this out but uh so kivu actually on the south side you can see that's really uh some interesting because it dries up here and then goes back down so this um basically uh is a way to get because there's a downward path here on the river system and i think we have that here let's zoom out a little bit uh if we can so on this you can basically start to see that uh you know that kivu will no matter where you are you can probably find a way into the congo jungle uh uh, going downhill so uh and that means goma as well so there's basically ways to get to these rivers uh for the animals uh to go not too heavily up the hill or not too steep down the hill and and it makes a huge difference so um and here you can see the other great lakes of africa um this is a huge lake here um, and then some other smaller lakes and I've been really trying to work on the safari side of things to these these lakes down here um, just because a lot of people uh, particularly uh, it's probably not wise to go 
directly into the deepest part of the jungle and actually some of the bigger animals a lot of the smaller animals are actually in the jungle the bigger animals like humans are outside of the jungle so these lakes actually are very important um and i'm even going to take a picture of that just i don't know how to explain how important these lakes are so uh let's look at an image really quickly on uh this uh google map so it's hard to see because a lot of this when you zoom out you don't see it but this is kind of the nose of uh the africa right there's some little nostril holes here and particularly these two big lakes uh, that you see right here and here, but there's smaller lakes here. And um, actually, uh, this is a national park, it looks like. But um, essentially, <clears throat> there was big populations as well. Um, you can see there's definitely farming done all here, but there's less. Um, so protecting this area um, is very important. So um, <clears throat> let me zoom out on this uh, map so you can see this so <clears throat> uh, and this is really the only <clears throat> you see the colors of the lakes really does change on the satellite imagery and this one actually you can't even see it all it's completely been uh, changed color and this one's starting to do that as well right and so this goes out into the congo um and basically <clears throat> makes the uh so if you don't get the biology right the chemistry right in these <clears throat> lakes, uh, the whole rest of the Congo becomes, uh, has microorganisms that can really be dangerous for the animals as well. So I'm always so surprised that the animals can drink. I've been seeing videos where the elephants are just drinking from this water that you're just like, how can the elephant possibly drink from that? Um, and that's like what they drink every day. So we have to change some of that. So these lakes down here on the south side <clears throat> are very important. Um, extremely important so um, I'm gonna take another image and uh, post that so people really understand this whole thing um, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to take a break for a moment here um, I'm just rushing to try to get this all I don't know how you know my situation is very bad I don't know if I could be in a lot of uh, trouble just for um, who knows but uh, so I'm trying to get some of this really valuable information out um, so that uh, you know, people can start helping with other practical things. Um, if you're in jail or prison or struggling just with offline stuff, um, a lot of that has to do with food and wildlife. So if you start doing nice things for the wildlife and focus on food and clean water, you'll probably be able to get out of uh, both real jail and other kinds of jail um, and start helping with the, how the planet's working. So that's why this is such an important conversation to have because uh, um, I, I don't know how to say this, but I know uh, many different uh, former inmates that are working in foods, farming, um, and hopefully wildlife and water. Uh, one of my good friends is a forestry guy and uh, it's very important to think about the wildlife because it's not just us that have had uh, struggles on this planet we've actually completely deforested the planet so we need to uh, think about that so um i'll be right back in a second here uh so in a moment here we're going to try to zoom in and look at each of these cities now we're basically on the south side of the congo river uh looking at the nose region um, so if you're familiar with that area, basically we have this eye here, this eye here, and then this whole nose here. This actually, this whole entire piece should definitely be a national park. We're talking everything. Um, so even all the way to the uh, ocean front, meaning that this piece here probably can be extremely valuable farmland um, already um, in West Africa. Uh, there's this whole piece of this jungle here that probably should be reserved as a national park, meaning it's very complicated to farm in Africa. You can maybe farm some of these regions, but you can see there's actually mining going on. These white areas are huge uh, mining operations. So, uh, but basically, uh, this piece of this puzzle probably could be reserved for farming um, and even up here one of the biggest farming regions is actually right in here 
um, in Ethiopia. So, but what we're looking at here is is really how to look at these lake regions um, and reserve that uh, more for uh, wildlife, right? And really, I'm not even talking about Madagascar here. Um, the entire island uh, really uh, is vital. Uh, you can see the green, the green color along this side and then the desert on this side, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means there's different types of wildlife, but particularly here in Kenya, you can see um, the conversation really does start in Kenya because although it's really sandy here, uh, it's really start because Kampala is definitely jungle, right? And you basically get, um, you know, and, and by the time you get into Rwanda and Lake Kikivu, you're deep in the jungle. This is, you know, basically that's the deepest part. Um, so right in here, the thing that I'm trying to really re-explain is that this nose, although it's, yeah, it seems like it's far away from the jungle. It's actually where if you want to go see a, a giraffe or an elephant, um, you know, and, and other big animals, wildebeests and, and uh, things, uh, they roam around the Serengeti in, in this region, as well as all in Tanzania. So, uh, uh, and there's Dar es Salaam, uh, a major city, which is supposed to be perhaps the largest city in all of Africa, in East Africa, um, and certainly one of the largest in all of Africa, is expected to have 5 million people um, or more, 10 million, and that makes it one of the largest cities on the entire planet. Um, you can already see here, this is Accra and Lagos being very large from the outer space um, here. But and then the tip here is Cape Town down here. So um, it's actually 70 degree year round, kind of like California uh, once you get down here. Um, so it's warm really all throughout Af there's everywhere in africa is very warm um uh, surprisingly warm so uh this is the equator right here so um and it only gets to be 70 or so degrees here in cape town so it's warm definitely if it's 70 here 80 90 uh degrees more um it could be along the equator um so and the wind actually doesn't move very much in the jungle uh, you might be surprised about that as well so but there's just so many details here that you should definitely look at you can see there's this very interesting river here a couple other lakes that didn't even show up small tiny rivers here and the cleanest water sadly you know it's just how do you get clean water uh, you might have to go up the river here so that means that all this, and you can see the deforestation here on this side, uh, particularly with this city here. Um, I've been looking at this one pretty carefully, but um, there's just so much here is Lake Kivu, but man, that city, you really gotta watch it there. So uh, I would say that these two cities, uh, it's hard to appreciate um, the importance uh, the responsibility that Africans have here. Uh, this is the only place, this is our only major jungle. Uh, you better really be careful here. So, and Africans really are careful um, because they have uh, a lot more experience in the jungle and they know what they're doing, uh, but there's still uh, a need uh, to work uh, with uh, making sure that things are going good so uh but definitely listen it, it's not about going to the jungle and saying hey we know what we're doing uh first try to listen and see what's going on uh but again what i wanted to emphasize there's these little rivers coming off of this mountain range here uh that we really want to look at carefully but we actually got down to the south side uh here uh looking at this region as well so uh hopefully um, this has been very helpful for you. Thank you so much. Um, please let me know what ideas you have. Um, there's just so much, uh, millions of details involved in studying this. Another lake here, all these river systems. Uh, man, uh, you know, and and so the food um, historically in Africa has been some trouble because. You know, they've really tried to not farm, but that really isn't the case anymore. As you saw on the farming map, um, essentially everything has been farmed here, right? There's not, <coughs> there's not, everything around the lakes has been farmed. Uh, so, 
uh, really that's why this southern piece is so important because it's definitely starting to be farmed. You can see here in uh, uh, Zambia, I believe, uh, there is uh, quite a lot of farming going on and they're definitely starting to farm here. And then you get down to Johannesburg and there's even more farming. So it's just, and look at this, right? This is Johannesburg. Uh, it's heavy farming here. So, and they had to do it uh, because there's a lot of mining operations and there's millions and millions of people that live in Johannesburg. And then that has to feed also Cape Town. So you can see Cape Town being a heavy blue spot. So there is quite a lot of farming. So it doesn't have to be like such a suburban farming uh, in all of Africa. They could actually do it more like they do in Cape Town and also Johannesburg, right? So there could be, and this whole piece here uh, should definitely be looked at um, and not necessarily farming as you get even closer into the jungle here. So, uh, and basically this is all farmed, right? So keeping this, uh, keeping this wise, um, it's not just, well, let's farm everything here. They actually have to remove some farms, make them for wildlife, particularly on those regions that we looked at, uh, through these pathways here. Um, so this probably should be opened up, um, quite a bit. Um, for uh, wildlife so anyway thank you so much for uh hearing this all out i'll try to do my best to keep working on expanding our freedoms uh and looking at what we can do uh, to be offline uh, and have fun and help um so really this will give you a start of the picture of what's going on for our entire planet right and as you zoom out here um, there's just so much, right? Um, and we just looked at this little piece right here, but it's really important piece of the entire, uh, situation, um, because there's really only two jungles on the planet. There's, you know, there's also the Oceana and the Caribbean and some other things like that. Um, but in terms of land, uh, animals, uh, this was a big piece of the puzzle that we just looked at. Um, and it's really not the whole piece. We also needed to look at this West African portion um, and then this portion here, but this is heavily populated. So as we saw in Kampala, it was fully populated there. And if we zoomed in on the map, you'd see this is very populated as well. So uh, basically we have to think about it carefully now. So, uh, and actually Egypt, Right here, one thing, good hope news is that this piece right here gives about 10% of the food of all of Africa comes from just uh, the Nile Delta. So that little region, if you do 10 of those, you basically can feed all of Africa, which is basically the size of this. So there's no reason that it has to be um, so vast. Uh, we can farm a lot better um, than what we are doing. So because that basically shows us that this region right here could probably farm all of Africa. So that means that uh, this piece right down here becomes very important as well as this piece in here in West Africa, which they already are farming. Nigeria is heavily farming in through here um, and things, but uh, the uh, better farmers are probably in Africa, um, although they're not, they don't have the same equipment. Um, they're definitely some of the best farmers in the world. So uh, we got a lot to learn. Uh, and then India here, as well as China. Um, and then even in uh, Brazil, uh, there's a lot of questions there about farming. So uh, again, thank you so much. And I hope uh, this has really helped you understand some things. Uh, so thanks so much for uh, trying to take some time um, out of your day, your night, um, to really study this. Um, it has really benefited me a lot um, to really think about this. Um, and a quick example is that, you know, I don't feel it necessary. Um, you know, I, I, I want to actually help. Uh, I, I live really far away from a lot of these problems and it's been uh, helpful, you know, to think, you know, even though I live here in the United States, um, you know, going down to Florida, or uh, Mexico or California, I can start to um, understand uh, some of the wildlife questions uh, right here where I live, um, and even in Europe, um, close to Egypt, uh, North Africa, and even West Africa here in East Africa. And then in India, you know, really all around India, uh, the climate uh, being fairly warm um, right near the equator, Sri Lanka, and then China and Asia. So 
uh, and even being more important uh, in Oceania here, uh, Southeast Asia, and so on. So, uh, and then the Caribbean also being very vital uh, for this whole discussion. So I really hope this has helped you think a lot about everything um, and uh, really think about your freedoms. Uh, you know, if you are struggling, um, it's not just with humans, uh, it's with wildlife. Um, and, you know, as we think about whatever kind of conflict is going on, whether it was Vietnam, Korea, uh, this Ukraine crisis is really about food and clean water. Let's not fight over things. Let's try to figure out a way to live with the wildlife here. And I think we can find a lot better way uh, on the planet. So thank you so much.